Alrighty, so JP has released their newest patch notes and they have already been translated courtesy of Grand Cross Database. So I will leave a link in the description for the page if you want to look over it yourself. Um, but there's a little bit of interest here, which is the only reason I'm going over it, because normally I don't go over JP patch notes all that often. But, uh, you know, if I get to see a new banner and stuff like that, kind of need to go over it. Uh, if you want to, feel free to subscribe. <laughs> I don't have a good segue for that. So anyway, uh, yeah, there is apparently going to be a new winged Elaine coming, which I don't think is a uh, super hype, <laughs> you know, character, but hey, I guess it is what it is. Uh, it's going to be a 600 mileage banner. They do have the actual like um, patch notes and stuff like that on JP that we can look at. Uh, actually go to home. And then if we head over here and we look at the actual banner itself, uh, it's pretty interesting. It, like I said, it is a 300, 600 mileage. You only get her at 600, which is a little disappointing uh, because they do have the Christmas Lilia on here, which I don't have and I would really like to get. So I might end up summoning on this, unfortunately. Uh, the new red Danafor Liz is on here. Uh, the old blue, uh, I think she's, no, she's red. The old red Winged Elaine is on here. Um, Summer Merlin is on here. Marlin, <laughs> Summer Marlin is on here, uh, which is kind of funny. The I think this is the blue Oslo and Hawk. So there's a couple of characters that I could get out of this, but then again, I tell you guys not to start like to to go for unfeatured characters. So I don't know. I may end up just skipping this banner completely, but. Uh, the character herself is pretty interesting, so we'll look at her kit really quickly. Blue Elaine. At the start of the ally's turn, apply petals of the sacred tree on all enemies for one turn, and I don't see any sort of translation on what that is. Um, but on all enemies for one turn, increases fairies... Or, oh, wait, no. I think this is what it does, actually, so I'm just dumb. Uh, increases fairy allies damage dealt by 30% and applies shock for one turn. So, um, it's a bit interesting because they I, they want this to be a old Festival King support unit so bad, but I think people are going to use this more for new uh, Chad King more than anything because it still ends up giving him 30% uh, damage increase, which is pretty nuts. Um, so that's going to be kind of helpful. She doesn't work in the back slot, though, which is going to be a really big kicker for her. Um, I just, I really don't think that she's going to do enough. I don't, I wouldn't gather, especially with her being in the front line, it wouldn't be hard to just absolutely just, just demolish her, you know, straight out of the gate for the enemy team. Um, you know, she's kind of an odd character. You're going to have to invest a lot of cosmetics and stuff like that into, and she's just pure support. Um, so there's not... I, unless you're just a really big King fan and you really want to run either Old Wing King uh, or Old Small Wings King or New Full Wings King uh, to get the damage boost, then I, <laughs> I don't really recommend this. So that's a bit odd. Um, her cards, though, are inflict damage equal to 250% of attack on all enemies, disables buff and debuff skills for two turns, which is actually pretty decent, but that's at level three. I'm not sure if it's going to disable buff and debuff skills at level one or two. Um, I would imagine it'll do some sort of combination, but I don't know uh, exactly what, what we're looking at there as far as the lower level skills go. And then the buff card is actually pretty interesting as well. Increases all allies' HP-related stats by 15%, recovers 40% of the damage taken for three turns. So it reminds me a lot of Bond's Bless card, or, or I don't think it's called Bless. Uh, I think it's called Gift, maybe? Uh, reminds me a lot of that, which is, I guess, somewhat uh, I like lore friendly, I guess, because, you know, Elaine and Bon are a couple. Uh, and then she has the same ultimate as the old uh, Elaine. So, or not the old Elaine, but the other full wings Elaine. So, <laughs> I don't know. She's kind of mid-tier, I guess. Could be an interesting support character for the King teams. Um, they really seem to be with uh, some of the new characters coming out. I would imagine uh, some of the JP players who already have Helbram's Relic could possibly pair the new Festival King with Helbram and having his Relic along with this Elaine to really get some crazy damage out with King like turn one uh, or I, I don't know if you're really going to have the CC to go first every time with that sort of team so probably turn two but 
Yeah, uh, pretty interesting to say the least. Um, there are new relics out for Small Winged King and this new Elaine already. So the Small Winged King one is kind of interesting. Applies bleed to all enemies for one turn when the hero does, uh, or when the hero damages enemies using an AOE skill. So uh, when he uses, I think it's his corrosion card or whatever one of his cards is an aoe that deals a debuff already uh it will now inflict bleed on them as well which is pretty interesting um and then golden wings on lane is increases all enemies damage taken by 30 percent when they are under the effect of shock debuff and as we know they get shock from her passive straight out the gate uh which is pretty interesting so <laughs> there could be quite a bit of support going on here for you know the king team um i don't necessarily know that it's going to be enough to really bring it back into the meta but they they really are trying not to let that character die uh for whatever reason uh they do have some new events and stuff like that going on this is going to be technically the part two to the two-year global anniversary so new you know things to mess with and free rewards to get there is a free multi's worth of tickets that you're going to be getting for uh the new banner and then I think they are also going to be introducing the new Ancient Holy War Festival uh, game mode, which is pretty cool. Because if you don't know, you're basically going to pick whether or not you want to be on like the angel side or the demon side of things. And you sort of just like compete with the community uh, against the other team to sort of secure rewards. I don't know exactly how long they last, um, but uh, well, it says right here, battle 18 through 24th of March. 2359 i'm not sure exactly what that i think that's like the time that it's going to end so only for like six days which is about a week's worth i don't know could be kind of interesting uh the rewards seem pretty small they do have those in here as well uh there will be three normal territories and one special territory for the holy war boss battle at the end of the battle um the obtained wp points will be shared and distributed among the faction the faction with higher accumulated points will win uh, normal territory three unit battle uses up AP auto battle drop obtainable choose from hard normal or normal hard or extreme difficulties so they've got a little bit more on this I'll probably touch more on this whenever it comes to global so that way I can actually read through the official patch notes and stuff like that because sometimes like just the you know leaving certain details out makes it hard for me to understand what what is even happening so uh, contribution rewards, depending on how many points you gather, you'll get rewards uh, based on that, which is nice. If you get 8,000 points at least, you'll get 10 diamonds, which is pretty interesting. I'm not sure how hard that will be to obtain, uh, but that's pretty cool. Personal ranking rewards, depending on how good you do as a you know a contributor, you'll also get rewards, which is really nice. And then the faction rewards, I'm assuming this is for you know being on the winning or losing side you'll gain uh, pretty much the best thing here is the super awakening coins and it's really not a whole lot um but then again i guess that's a good thing in a sense that you know even if you choose the weaker of the two factions you're you're not going to get you know undercompensated terribly which is good i guess um it looks like there's going to be an exchange shop for it as well with some pretty pretty average rewards i guess which is kind of nice um chapter clear rewards uh, it looks like they're adding... Oh, I think they're doing one of those events where if you've completed story chapters 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, you're going to gain these rewards for doing so, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then daily mission rewards are going to be increased, it looks like. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty average as far as patches go. Still really on the fence about this banner. I do really want uh, Lilia. I was hoping that she would be one of the guaranteed choices that you could pick at the end, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to summon on this just to try to get her. I think that would be a, a big dumb choice, uh, and I don't think that I'm honestly going to be able to use this Elaine efficiently. If not, I'm never going to actually get any real use out of her. So I'm probably going to skip this one uh, and we'll see what happens next. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts or opinions on this, let me know down in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear them or reply or just, you know, have a conversation with you. Um, but that's pretty much it. So thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.